Oh, you've been trying to apply for medical electives in a UK hospital, but you need some help in making that a reality. I totally understand you because I was once in your shoes. But don't worry, this video is going to be all the help you need. Hello, my name is Dr. Busola Deborah. I am a recent international medical graduate from China. I did my clinical attachment in three different countries and continents. So that is China in Asia, Nigeria in Africa, and UK in Europe. So I'm going to be talking about the UK part because I'm sure that is why you've clicked on this video. So since I launched this channel late last year, a lot of you have been asking me, how am I going to get a medical internship in the UK, which is also known as elective. So I'm going to be telling you exactly how in this video. I made a list of every point I'm going to be making in the description box So if you have a particular one that you want to be addressed You can just go to the timestamp below and go straight to that so I'm going to start by explaining what a clinical elective is A clinical elective is a placement which is usually part of the medical school curriculum Where the students have opportunity to experience being in the hospital And see how their learning can be applied in real life situations So clinical elective is called different things in different countries In some places it is called medical internship In some places it is called posting some places it is called placement so knowing what exactly it is that you are applying for is very important because sometimes people confuse the internship that is done after medical school with the one that is done within medical school but for the clinical elective it deals with the one that is done when you are still in medical school so that is the one i'm going to be talking about today so next on i'm going to be talking about the advantages of doing a clinical attachment so you might notice that i'll use these words interchangeably in the video so just know that i'm talking about the same thing okay so clinical elective gives you a unique experience which puts you ahead of your peers it helps you to boost your confidence by putting you out of your comfort zone as medical students we are so used to the theory part so having to go to the hospital to practicalize whatever we've learned challenges our brain so it is very good and the health system of every country is different so if you want to work in the UK, it just makes sense that you undergo a clinical elective so you can be able to understand the system even before you start. Being able to do a clinical elective in the UK helps you to improve your communication skills because there are actually different types of English. Being born into the country and coming into the country speaking English are two different things. Like when I first got to the UK, I was shocked because I could not understand a lot of things that they were saying and they also found it very difficult to understand what I was saying. If you also get the opportunity to do your clinical electives in the UK if you plan to work there there's a possibility that you might even be retained in the hospital that you are doing your clinical internship so let's move on to how long these electives actually are so clinical electives in the UK vary from about two weeks to eight weeks and in some hospitals you might be able to extend more than that but this depends on the programs that you are required to do and also the hospital that you're applying in it's very important that you know exactly what you want to do before you start applying for these electives so you might be wondering how to decide what electives you are supposed to do probably like for how long or which department exactly you are supposed to apply for so this will depend on a number of factors it depends on your school's requirements it also depends on what the hospital is offering different hospitals offer different posts at different points in time so you just need to be aware of this post and make your application based on the information that you've gotten so which hospitals actually offer clinical internship you might be glad to know that a lot of hospitals within the UK offer clinical internship having to decide what hospital to go for would definitely require a lot of research to do but fortunately medlink student created a blog post where a list of hospitals that offer internship has been compiled so i will leave that in the description box so you can go ahead to their website so make sure you check the description box of this video to see the list so let's talk about how exactly you're going to apply for this elective post i mentioned that different hospitals offer this and i've given you a list of hospitals you can go to check and apply from there so what you need to do is to go on the website you need to do some exploration in terms of exploring the website so this websites are tailored for undergraduate electives so if you are doing postgraduate elective that is a different ball game entirely but that is also available but in this video I'll be focusing more on undergraduate electives so you want to go to the hospital website and look for the undergraduate teams email since this websites are tailored for undergraduate it will be easy to navigate so you just need to search the website and find the email so you need to email them and you introduce yourself tell them what school you are in what programs you want to apply for and if they have a post available at the moment and the thing is like different hospitals have different time frames where they open up 
elective slot so you need to be vigilant this is not something that just drops on your doorstep it's something that you also have to do your own part which is by sending lots of emails and waiting for a response but the thing is even if you don't see the undergraduate email any email you find them make sure you send an email to them explaining your situation and what exactly you want they'll be the ones to direct you to the right channels and if you're actually in the UK it's gonna make it more easy because once you're able to call you're able to ask for information directly because emails can take some time but calls can just do it directly so if you have anyone in the UK that can help you to call these hospitals that would be lovely and if not you might have to like just go ahead and send those emails and wait for their response it might take a while but they will respond to you i know there are some of you that might want to work directly with consultants and you want a particular specialty probably they're not offering in the undergraduate team you can also go to the hospital website that you wish to do your elective in and look for the consultant and the specialty that you want to have your electives done in they usually write their emails out there so when you find that you just want to send an email to the consultant and wait for their response so these are the major ways to apply and make sure you follow up on these emails you need to learn to write loads of emails because the uk system is just structured that way almost everything they do requires you to write a lot of emails and i didn't realize this before going into the system i'm not someone who loves to write emails but i had to learn it so make sure you are ready for that part of it okay so we've been able to talk about how to apply for this elective post if you've watched this video to this point and you're gaining some value make sure you hit the subscribe button okay and let's keep the family growing thank you so much if you've already subscribed to the channel and if this is the first video you are watching of me welcome to the family make sure you subscribe we're going to be talking about everything and anything medicine okay so from vlogs to information about the uk system even like different countries with time going on we're going to be bringing more people onto the channel to talk about things that you might have struggles with just to find a way to like share information there is so much information i have and i can't wait to share to all of you please make sure you subscribe to my channel how much do this elective cost to my knowledge most of them are paid i heard like there might be some that are free but i personally haven't seen a free one just have at the back of your mind that you, you need to pay some pounds in order to be able to have access to this elective because it's actually a very good opportunity to have a taste of the system and to learn beyond what you are used to all right so now that we've talked about that you might be wondering how to sort out your visa situation like what visa exactly would you need to come into the country so in order to do a clinical elective you would need a standard visiting visa there is no special visa for electives you just need to apply for the standard visiting visa which is usually six months if you're applying for the first time and these electives are not even spanning that period of time so you don't need to spend the whole six months in the country some people decide that after they apply they're going to stay back and do this elective which is totally fine but there is no special visa to do electives generally the hospitals are not responsible for giving you visa or giving you a certificate of sponsorship to apply for your visa so they expect you to sort out your visa and then they can be able to offer you a place some hospitals might decide to offer you a place even though you're not in the country in the hope that you sort out your visa and come to the country for your placement while some hospitals would prefer that you're already in the country before they even give you a placement in their hospital so it's just about checking around and see what works for you but the most important thing for you to note is that you have to be the one to sort out your visa by yourself you might also be wondering how to sort out accommodation so accommodation is another very important aspect of this elective some hospitals offer hospital accommodation but most of the times you have to pay for them so you have to put that at the back of your mind that you're going to be paying for accommodation where i did mine i had to pay about 500 pounds for a month so like you can just have that estimate in mind when you're thinking about accommodation and you don't necessarily have to wait for the hospital to give you accommodation you could search on accommodation websites like um, zoopla or right move and check for places close to the hospital that you plan to do your placement that that is when you eventually get one so you can make proper arrangement for where you will be staying and the earlier you search for accommodation the better because you want to ensure that you're settled before you come into the country or before you start your placement on that note i'll be telling you how how to maximize your time during your stay in the hospital so that you don't end up paying some amount of money and not getting a lot from it the first thing you need to have in mind when you go for your placement is that you're going there to learn to learn new skills interpersonal skills learning skills relating with patients even communication skills you're just going to learn practical skills as well that is the main reason you're going to learn so have this at the back of your mind that you need to 
apply yourself you need to be available because i noticed that when you are willing to learn they are always willing to teach so you need to put yourself out there and be ready to apply yourself having to do your placement in the uk especially if you plan to work there eventually is a very good opportunity to build your network you never know who is going to be of help you never know who you're going to be of help to you never know who is going to cross your path again so you just need to build your network at every opportunity that you have and this is also a very good time to secure references because the way the uk system is is whenever you're going to get a new job you need references from your previous job so this can serve as a previous job and if you build good rapport with the consultants around the other doctors around they would be happy to give you a reference when you're going to apply for a new job so this is something that you really need to pay attention to so you don't just waste the time because if you're coming back to them months later they're probably forgetting about you but if you're able to build a relationship at that moment and you're able to tell them that oh is it okay if at some point i need a reference can you be my reference they will gladly do that so you need to get their contact contact emails as well in order to be able to contact them later if you want to have an idea of how the internship is in the uk you can watch the video on my channel that's going to pop up on the screen right now so it's a vlog where i shared my experience so make sure you go ahead to watch it if you haven't and while you're at that make sure you subscribe to my channel if this video is of help to you in any way now let's talk about the roles you're going to be taking on during your clinical electives so i don't think you're going to be dealing with the patients by yourself you're going to have a guidance all through it could be the consultant it could be fy2 fy2 is like foundation year two doctor so in the uk they have the foundation year program which starts august every year and is for two years so we have the foundation year one and the foundation year two which is actually the program that i am doing so there's a lot of requirements that you need especially as an international medical graduate if you'd like me to create a video on that make sure you write the comments in the comment section and i will do that when do you so this foundation year program is like the equivalent of let's say the housemanship or your internship program after your medical school so if you want to do that in the uk it is well possible and um, if you want to have more information about that make sure you leave it in the comment section below so yeah like i was saying you have like all the senior doctors there to assist you to guide you you are basically going to shadow other doctors you are not left to do anything by yourself so whatever you are doing is going to be under supervision so you could do things like taking blood samples under supervision even in my case i was able to assist in some surgeries i was able to do minor procedures i learned a lot about the old system i was in the a and e for some period of time so i learned how to hand over because there are different doctors on shift and when the doctors are trying to change their shift they need to hand over all the patients they have on ground so that the new doctors that are coming would understand what has been going on there's a particular way that you need to hand over which i was taught during the clinical elective so these are some things that you can be able to learn i was able to practicalize a lot of things that i learned in medical school but note that everything you're going to be doing is going to be under supervision because i mean you are not yet a licensed doctor you are just a medical student who is trying to gain experience in the hospital which this is all about and if you watched up to this point guys i know that this might seem like a lot of information i totally understand you but like this video is always there you can come back to it digest information and use it how you deem fit if you have some more questions you can leave them in the comment section and i would answer as many as i can and i hope this video was helpful in some way or the other i wish you the very best in your journey and do not forget to subscribe to my channel and i'll see you guys on the next one bye to worship you i live to worship you i live i live to worship you i'm a fine gesture oh what am I saying? Ah, let me take a break.